My name is Tavitha Kanyi and Kari Wusana to my YouTube channel. I figured a lot of women are very curious about their parts, their private parts. There's some that we are taught in school. That's why I know where my fallopian tube is. But then there are parts that we are not taught in school. And due to my curiosity, I did a little bit of research. And here are the things that I found out that I thought you would be interested to know. Right? Niko na Mwakenya. I have like a whole three page Mwakenya. Le, you can't tell me nothing. I know what I'm talking about. Nimefanya research. Okay. In 844, obviously we were taught um, the internal organs of our private parts. But I feel like it's easier for men because when you're standing up as a man, you're seeing them. Most of the time, we don't even see them. Like, you know, it's out of curiosity that you get a mirror or a camera, but but it's it's so tough <laughs> to know what you're dealing with. At least for me, yeah, at least for me, because I did a lot of research for me to finally know the proper way of labeling my parts, the proper way of cleaning my parts, the proper way of, you know, dealing with that whole area. So I'm going to start with um, parts of female genital anatomy. There are two parts, which most of us actually confuse. One of them is called the vagina, and the other one is called the vulva. Most of us assume that everything down there is actually a vagina, and it's wrong. It's the vulva. The external part is the vulva. Okay? The internal part is the vagina. Sour? Now that we have gotten what a vulva is and what a vagina is, let's start labeling them. There is um, the mons pubis. I'm really hoping I'm pronouncing this right. That is the top part of that area that grows hair. There is the clitoris hood, which covers the clitoris. And when I say the clitoris, it's literally the tip of the clitoris if you're wondering what i'm saying hold up did you know that whatever you're seeing and whatever we call the clitoris is just a quarter of it the other part of the clitoris is inside hidden where it cannot be found did you know that i just learned that like three weeks ago hmm? okay can we move on Yes, thank you very much. The next one is the urethra, the urethra opening. And then the last one, the vaginal opening. And then now, I think everyone knows this is actually the anus. And then um, we have the lips. So there are two types of lips. There is the outer one and the inner one, right? The inner one is actually called um, labia minora. The outer one is called labia majora. Who knew? Who knew? I'm sorry. Am I the only one who's discovering such crucial things at 25? I feel like this is something that I should have probably been taught. Probably, right? So you've mentioned what is where. But do we know the uses? Well, basically, let's start with the clitoris, satisfaction, pleasure, purely. And then we have the urethra opening, which is basically where we pee from. That's where the urethra is. And then we have the vagina opening, which is basically where we menstruate from, where we have children from, where we get discharged from. And then we have the anus, which everyone has. So we have three holes down there. If you are wondering how many there are, there are three. Okay, there are three simbili mitatu. Okay, is there a proper way of cleaning? And do you clean the vagina or the vulva or what are you supposed to be doing? The vulva, if you have forgotten, is the external part. And it is advised to either do it in two ways. One, clean the vulva with soap because that part is oily and it's sweaty, it has hair. Clean with soap and warm water and there are people who actually prefer to just to use warm water which i wouldn't advise because it's oily using water without the soap is gonna be a little bit tricky okay so the vulva you wash that 
The vagina, on the other hand, is not supposed to be washed. There are two things that the vagina does. It self-cleanses by one, the pH. It has a pH that's around 3.5 which is basically the same as a lemon pH and you don't want to mess around with that because when you do either by cleaning or putting water in there or putting anything else as a method of cleaning you're gonna wash out the good bacteria that's protecting you from getting infections and actually open up your vagina to a higher risk of getting infections and STIs okay and then the second thing that itself it, it cleans itself, it self-cleanses. Is that proper English? Yes, it self-cleanses. Is basically by the discharge. If you're a woman, you know what I'm talking about. When it comes out, it cleanses all the bad bacteria, um, the vaginal discharge, makes sure that, you know, when you're menstruating, hey, menstruation, okay, that's another topic for another day. But when you're menstruating, Basically, all the blood that is left on the walls, the discharge makes sure that comes out and it leaves that area with proper pH, okay? So, what have we learned about washing? Wash your vulva. Do not, and I repeat, do not wash your vagina, okay? This is how you get infections easily, darling. And then, let's go to underwear 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 i feel like everyone feels comfortable in some sort of underwear but cotton is the best underwear that is there it's literally the only underwear that we should be wearing but because sometimes you want to feel sexy you know have some lace in there some thong in there please make sure that you're not doing it for an estimated like long period okay get you some cotton underwear girl that woman down there needs some cotton healthy underwear okay and then when you get that cotton underwear please kindly watch your Aibo. take that underwear outside to sun dry because you don't want to wear wet stuff again that is how you're introducing new bacteria to your vagina you don't want that just make sure jua in on underwear tafadali please and if you decide to wear any other type of um, underwear, make sure that that tiny part, the one that looks like a pant liner, actually is cotton. And then when you're going to bed, it doesn't matter if you, at this point, you've gotten cotton underwear. It will let that girl breathe. Please. Breathing is crucial. There's a lot of sweating and a lot of oil. And that area basically, and there's discharge, that area basically has a lot of things going on. So please, to just make sure that everything is healthy and happy, try to let her breathe. If you're chilling in the house, me, I don't see why you're chilling in the house with underwear or sleeping with underwear. You can sleep with shorts that have air coming in and out, you know? Okay, we're good. Perfect. Imwa Kenya is still here. We are on page two. We have talked about the parts of um, the female genital anatomy. We have talked about washing. We have talked about underwear. Okay? Let's talk about ALB or do's and don'ts. I just have to mention that it's perfectly normal for that part of your body to be a different skin tone from the other part of your body. And that's okay. Please do not bleach this beautiful woman. That is how she was meant to be. Sawa, leave her. She's happy. She's healthy. Leave her alone. Do not bleach her. It's perfectly normal for that to happen. Second thing that's quite normal, if you use razors or gillette to shave, you'll eventually have bumps. And that's why it's advisable to either use scissors and like cut on top or wax and if worst comes to worst and you need to shave just make sure that you're using the gillette from waist down you're going where the hair is going not against the hair because once you go against the hair that's when we have black spots and two bumps it happens even with men when they're shaving their beards it's because of that razor okay it's basically very normal for that to happen stop panicking 
sour and then something that i feel like every young girl and lady should know is that you're supposed to be wiping from front to back not the other way around you start from front going to back because when you start back coming to front everything from your anus which is feces will enter your vagina and urethra urethra and that will give you crazy ass problems baby you don't want that okay and then we should try as much as possible to clean that area once or twice a day so that it's fresh and when i say fresh i don't mean it has a scent please 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 do not use scented soap when washing do not use scented band liners and finally do not ever spray that part please if you want to smell nice ebu spray uku kwa shingo mikono everywhere else but do not spray anywhere near the girl because you're giving yourself infections that you will live with for the rest of your life you'll start scratching yourself like a mad woman no one wants to see that and having discharge that is very abnormal okay and if you feel like you need scent you can always take your cotton underwear and soak it in like downy so that it has that smell but please don't spray sawa and then um we should actually i learned this last week we should actually see a gynecologist and get a pap smear at least at least once in every 2 years when you turn 20 or 21 apparently this is very crucial to know exactly what is going on in your vagina okay it's very crucial so if you have the money and if you have the time please go to a gynecologist let them check don't be shy it's their job they're trained to do it they've seen 10000 vulvas and vaginas this is exactly what they were trained to do please see a gynecologist sawa and then what else what else haven't i said i'm looking at my more kenya hmm whenever you visit friends or boyfriends or girlfriends and you're given a towel or a bucket please kindly hmm you know what to do you know what to do Whatever you're using to wash your girl with or wipe her with has to be clean. So I would advise the next time you're going to visit someone, carry your own tiny cloth to clean your girl. And if you're given a bucket or a karai to wash your girl, please make sure you properly wash that karai before you use it to wash your girl because your girl is very sensitive even when you're going to the washroom please make sure una tupa ka tissue down there so that it doesn't splash that's how you get a lot of diseases baby what i meant to do with this video is to just make sure that one we stop being shy about it it's normal to have a discharge it's normal to be aroused we should normalize having these conversations because I am 25 and I'm just learning that I need to visit a gynecologist. And I'm just learning that cotton underwear is good for my health. Information is out there. Let's go out and get that information. Let's do research. Let's know what works. Let's know what to do and what not to do because we are the owners of these vaginas and these vulvas. And if we don't take care of them, we will be the same people who are suffering. Okay? So let's do better to Fazali. If you have any questions or if you feel like there's something you can add, please do so. Please do so. And if you have a younger sister or a younger cousin or a younger female or even a friend that you think would benefit from watching this video, please share it so that we make sure that this information is getting out there. Okay? We need the right information. We need to know how to take care of ourselves. Sawa sawa. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate. Thanks for coming. Thank you for coming. Bye.